here's where the story ends. Day five of five at the World Para Athletics European Championships in Bidgosh. They have been magnificent hosts at the Savisha Stadium. 33 titles down for decision on the final day. 18 in the track, 15 in the field. 12 already done this morning. 21 on the way. And as usual, the weather is terrific in Bidgosh. Hey, it's a, it's an all-time high for this week. 22 Celsius. They wrap up strongly. A little bit of rain earlier in the week, but nothing unduly awkward. It's the big leap towards Tokyo 2020. And the final 21 European champions will be crowned tonight. Four field events to start off with, as usual. A couple of shot puts. Then we're into the track. Men's 1500 minutes, T38. Michael McKillop in that. We've got the women's 800, T34. The women's 200, T64, which is an all Dutch affair. And that's it. And it's going to go as quickly as that all night. So pay attention or else. Good evening from Will Downing. Tolson Toller will be along in a few moments. We've got the men's discus F11 to get us underway. There's eight in this, including one of the great field event champions. It's been around a long time as Bill Marinkovic of Austria. F11 complete visual impairment. So they all have guides. Five of the eight, and the first five that we'll see have been in the shot put this week. The other three are discus specialists, although it hasn't always been that way. Fabulous stadium, as you can see, Polish television have been here all week. They've been covering uh, all the sessions live. And most of the action has been on the national TV sports channel as well. So, great publicity here. Igor Baskakov won silver in the shot earlier this week for Russia. Next up, Alvaro Di Amo Cano. Fourth in the shot here in his guide is his brother Roberto. Next up, the European silver and bronze medalist from past championships in the shot, Miroslav Madzia. Next up for Greece, first major championship, ninth in the shot this week for Nicolas Brantis. For Russia, the 2016 European championship bronze in the discus and bronze in the shot this week, Sergei Shatilov. The former Paralympic and World Javelin champion, Bill Marinkovic for Austria. For Russia, ninth in the discus of the World Championships in Dubai, Pavel Nesterenko. And he actually was in the shot put this week, he finished sixth, but bronze in the discus in his last Europeans in 2016, Piteri Piazzo for Finland. So that discus one of four coming attractions. There are a couple of shot put finals that are taking place simultaneously as well, which will be something for Tolson Tollett to have a gander at. Good evening for the last time this week. There's a tear in my eye as I say good evening on the final night. What a four and a half days it's been so far very much enjoyed it. always enjoy the para athletics whether it's europeans world's paralympics anything it's always wonderful to watch there's some great performances as always you always see loads of personal bests season bests european records world records whatever it may be 
it's one of those things, para sport, that you always see people who have only been in the game a couple of years, they turn up and they realise it's for them. Whether it be athletics, whether it be winter sports, whether it be swimming, anything it is. And it's a wonderful crowd as well that you get to know and get involved with. So from that perspective, that's one thing away from the athletics or the sport in general. But watching these athletes go around is also something special as well. Can't speak highly enough of them. This man, already a silver this week in the shot put, is first to go, Igor Baskakov. Complete visual impairment category. Think about that for a moment. So Baskakov's lifetime best is 35.65. Russia at the top of the middle table. The hosts doing their best. Poland at top in 2018. Russia on their way to topping the table here. 33.16 for Baskakov with his first. As we head over to the men's shot put, F63. Yeah, and we've got a huge amount of ace champions in this as well. One in particular, Aled Davis for Great Britain. But there may be a bit of pressure coming from our representative from Luxembourg in a team of one. There's five in this final. Always good to see Iron Tom have shared in action. Yeah, the, uh, is. the Belgian team for quite a number of championships have, have looked after him because he is in a team of one and he's won silver in the discus and the shot at the last Europeans. Bade Tuzi, loose in Paris, silver in the shot at the 2016 Euros and three years ago he won bronze in the discus and shot. But the 15 times major champion. Alan Davis is here as usual. Six times he's won European gold. Marta Madanchuk of the Czech Republic. Six in the discus. Last time out of Berlin. And Detko Ovtrov has won a major amount of medals in his career. A grand total of eight, including the 2011 world title. That was in the javelin. Well, but it's Poland back to the usual had a good week and it's the discus. F11. Della Meccano is second with a foul. So Poland up again through Madzia. Well, his guide liked it. 41 years of age. It's been on the circuit since 2008. Not sure if you can hear a few Ula Lars in the background there. 36 25 puts him in the first place after his first effort. Second in 2014 in Swansea. Currently in the gold medal position here. But very early days indeed. So Nikolai Sprantis of Greece is guided into the circle. Ooh. 
And that isn't bad. Brad has his first major championships. 35-10, his lifetime best. 28 years of age. And he gave that everything he had. Leaves him in third position. So, guys, Shatilov is due up next. Shatilov, bronze in 2016. He has been around for a long time. Born in Serbia. Austrian through and through. As we wait for the Russian Shatalov. Won a bronze medal in the 2013 World Championships in shot put. At the Paralympic Games, he competed in London 2012. Best of seven there. Former power lifter, as many of them have been as well. So Shatalov starts with a foul. Has a lifetime best of 37-39. That he threw when he gained that bronze medal in the discus back in 2016 in Grisetto. Time now for Big Bill. Metaphorically speaking. So the Austrian Marinkovic is gracing us with his presence in the final session of these championships, the 47 year old. Won a gold in the javelin back in 2004 in Athens. Coached by Grigor Hogler. <gasps> keenly watching on. And that already looks like it's going to be the lead throw for the time being. Had shoulder, shoulder surgery back in 2017 on his left shoulder, though, not his throwing arm. That's what happens to us as we all get older. Things start to fall apart. No issues here, though, for Marinkovic today. 35-78 for him. It doesn't put him in the first. It puts him into the silver medal position. He's behind. Madzia of Poland. As Nestorenko. Won gold at his Russian National Championships in 2018.
Decent first effort. Thirty-year-old Pavel Nesterenko. Power lifter, para power lifter. Now para athlete. Foul first up. So three fouls to date as we head to the bench shop, putting Alan Davis. Alan Davis has dominated this for so, so many years. The seven times world champion, the six times European champion. Paralympic gold in the shot in Rio, in the discus in London, bronze in the shot there. 13 meters 83, Alan Davis is in the lead. His last major championship defeat at the Commonwealth Games in 2014. There was silver in the discus there. And because that only takes in certain countries of the world and it's not a continental event, then basically you're talking about, I think, the 2011 World Championships. The last time he did not get a major championship gold. That and London 2012, but he got a gold in the discus, but a bronze in the in the shot. So Adamczyk, he's a 9.84 thrower in his career, and a good goal, I guess, today would be to try and break 10 meters for the first time in competition. If he'd done that, he'd be in the same place he is now, which is in fourth. Ovchirov now for Bulgaria, the former world champion in the javelin in 2011. Now, we haven't seen him in the last few championships. Last was London 2017. He won bronze in the discus in that, as was the case in his last Europeans in 2016 in Grisetto. Wonder if he's done his back a bit of damage there. Certainly there was the little moan and then the motion. Ovchov still 10 minutes 22. That's good news for him. He moves up into fourth place. Two meters off the medals. Ovchov, an 11.70 thrower in his career. <laughs> Tom Hapshide again then. Seven major championship medals in his career. He's won silvers in the last two world championships with the Dudelange Club. That's a belting throw. Now there's potential there. He's only about 35 centimeters behind Alan Davis from that first round. And because there's only five in this, they are gonna breeze through this F63 decider. For single above knee amputees. Tom Hapshide has done something serious. He's in the lead 1407 championship record as we go to the shop for F57. Well, this is seated category, so all six taken at the same time, and he's equaled his lifetime best with his <sighs> opening throw there, ten thirty-two. <laughs> Always difficult when you've got six in a row. We've seen a lot of fouls this week as well. 
Judging has been very critical, but very fair at the same time. Rojas, 30, 30 years of age, 10.42, an improvement on his lifetime best with his second. He's up against a, a few big hitters in this one, including Poland's home for a bit, Janusz Rosicki. Well, I hope I likes that one. So he's gone 1032, 1042. We did see in the shot put earlier this morning in one of the events where one competitor had a complete improvement on every single throw, which is a rarity. But that has put him up to 1085. He's absolutely smashing his lifetime best. It was 1032, which he equaled with his first. Now it's up to 1085. It's always amazing how major championships bring out so much more in athletes. The adrenaline, a slight bit of pressure, nerves, all works well. I mean, you can bring it all together, you come up with the results. It's always better to have a few butterflies in the stomach. Just to emphasize that after the first three throw throws, the athletes get a rest. They can get a drink if they want. They can reposition themselves and get themselves sorted before they take the next three. Same across the board. Rojas is ready to go for his second three. That might be better altogether. Well, Russia lead at the top of the medal table. Twenty-nine goals in total. Host nation Poland, who are top in Berlin, are on fifteen equal with Ukraine. Lithuania, one gold, four silver, and a bronze as well. Well, there's a bit of free positioning going on. I think that might have been a foul in the last one. It hasn't been officially called yet. It has now. So that's been the issue with a, a few of these seated throwers this week, whether it be the javelin or whether it be the shot put or the discus. Sometimes the, the leg just slightly lifts out. Your backside goes up, your buttocks lift, and that creates a foul. So the officials are now happy with how he's seated. Just to let you know that Thomas Robel, who was due to go in this in Poland, ah! did not start. So there are six in this event. As Lithuania's Rojas comes to his penultimate throw on that 10.78. So no improvement on his third, that lifetime best of 10.85. Some 
big throwers coming down the line. Rakitsky, 15.86, a lifetime best for him. For Shapatov, season best of 13.39 so far for the Russian. So his final attempt ah! as he tries to push out towards 11 metres and that's a very good effort to finish with. Regardless of what happens, he's certainly made the improvement as far as his career goes. Blasting up towards that 11 metre mark. That one won't count, that's a foul. So two fouls out of his six attempts. The best is third of 1085, a new lifetime best for Rojas. So Ovtaroff is third round throw. Going out to 1022, we've seen the lead throw for Tom Habscheid. 1407 championship record in round two. Alan Davis had a no throw after that. Oh, 11 meters 16, it's a good leap for him. And that's heading towards his lifetime best. Habscheid, as you'll note, has thrown another subsequent championship record of 14 metres 53. Davis in his third round with a no throw. And we are with it in round four now. We've reached halfway in the competition. So Ala Davis, who hasn't been beaten in a major championship final for nine years, is 70 centimetres behind Tom Hapscheid. Hapscheid with that championship record of round two of 14.07 and his third round throw going further out to 14.53. And that's a strong lead for Hapscheid, Ala Davis on 13.83. Tuesday. 13.53, a full metre back in third. As we go to the men's long jump, we're in the opening round, T13, the least visual impairment category. But it is still obviously a lot of visual impairment to start with. With Alexi Labsin, a plethora of Paralympic world and European golds, but not in the long jump. He's been 400 meters champion in the Paralympic Games, 100 and 200 champion in the world, a couple of world relay golds he's won as well, and a couple of European relay golds. Ivan Jose Canablanco, the reigning European champion. He's won two in a row and aiming for three. Belting run up, he went a long way into the Plasticine and it's a red flag. Championship record is 691, that belongs to Per Jonsson. We've already seen a jump in this. He had a no jump, same as Tukeljutz, who was in the a Universal Relay last night. And now, Ivan Canablanco. As we go back to the 
F11 discus throw for men. And Poland are up again. The man who's in first place. Miroslav Madzia. 36.25 with his opener. He's 47 centimetres in front of Bill Marinkovic. And he'll stay 47 centimetres in front. Hopefully he didn't get a fry from that. Does it hit the metal work? As you can imagine, when you're complete visual impairment, sometimes it can be difficult to know exactly where it's going. So no improvement for Madzia as Nicholas Brantis of Greece re-enters the circle. First major championships for this man. Currently sitting in fifth position, 32.01. And that one just caught in the netting there, so a foul on his second as well. So Madzia leads, Marinkovic in the silver medal position. Del Amecano in the bronze for Spain at the moment as we head back to the long jump pit. It's a first major championship for Ikeuwu Smith of Spain. He's based in Zaragoza. He went out in the heats of the 100 metres. That's a nice distance. No problem with the board at all. Wins them. Q Smith, 6.59, and he goes into the gold medal position. What a debut. Might be good enough for a medal straight away. Alec Davis has had two no throws since the 1383 that put him into the lead. He's now second behind Tom Hampshire by around 70 centimeters. That's a belter! That's a great throw! That's heading out towards the world record line. And he loved it. And justifiably so. 1752 is his world record. This being F63, the line is for Tom Hapshide's world record, which is 15.10. Alan Davis being an F42. But never mind the categories. Feel the win. He's got the longest throw, 15.17, and he's in the gold medal position. Well, from one Brit who knows how to win gold to another, Maria Lyle, who goes in this, the European and championship record holder. 100 metres T35 final. And there are three going in this. And it's the same three who went in the 200 metres earlier this week. That one won by Maria Lyle of Great Britain. In lane three, it's Nika Timber. Lifetime best of 15.48. She was bronze in 2019. Bronze. 200 metres here. 21 year old from Dunbar in Scotland who's won European Championships and doubles over the World Championship in the final two 2019 as well. And you go to Kibble of Poland. Silver in that 200 metres earlier this week, a best of bronze in this at the 2018 European Championships. On your marks. So Tima in three, Lyle in four, and Keeble will go from Poland. 
in lane five. Set. And away they go, and Lyle got away very sharpish indeed. So sharp, as a matter of fact, it almost looked like a false start. But she hit it perfectly as she races away down the main straight. She's 15 metres ahead. She's going to take gold again. 14.40 is a new championship record for Maria Lyle, and she does the double again in the 100 and 200. Tima takes second place, 15.60 for her. Adds a silver to her bronze in the 200 metres. For the championship record, it's been rounded down to 14.39 for Maria Lyle. She's broken her own championship mark, she said, back in 2014 in Swansea. So the team East Lothian athlete got away to a fast start. The reaction time was brilliant. She was 10 metres away by the halfway mark. <laughs> Wonderful stuff indeed. Had a few issues with anxiety a few years back, but she's overcome them, she's overcome everything, and she's overcome the field here. Brilliant running by Maria Lyle. As she looks ahead towards Tokyo later this year. Championship record of 14.39. Tima with the silver and Kibble with the bronze. Back to the bench, the main put shot put 57. 57. <laughs> In stereo, Kakol from Poland. I, I really ought to point out we are in different commentary boxes this week. That's probably really obvious to you. And we can't see each other physically either. So we're trying to feel. Same way that uh, Kakol is doing for Poland. It's uh, all throws at once. Sees Arlena. It's a lifetime best, 12.95 top of the pile. Zach Skinner, the 100 meters champion in the men's long jump T13. Well, he has been concentrating on the long jump for a lot of his career, but he's shown his metal on the track fantastically this week. Doesn't seem the happiest with that though. Silver in the last Europeans in Berlin. His first major championship medal. And like Martin Gillingham, a very talented schools rugby player, whose speed was spotted, he went into athletics. Martin ended up having a very good athletics career. Does some paid talking now, like us. So Kakol again, uh, we saw his last throw, which is 12.80. Well, I can tell you that lead by Zach Skinner, he didn't seem happy about it. Not sure why, he's gone into the lead. Six metres 69, goes into the gold medal position for Great Britain. So if Kakol can emulate something like that, he'll be well jumped. Twelve eighty-nine. Still well past every throw he's done so far has been past his lifetime best. And he still has two throws to do.
Well, it's back to the track now in the final of the women's 100 metres, T47. Reigning European champion goes in this. It is the category for below elbow or wrist amputee. So going for Great Britain, bronze in the long jump this week. Bronze in the one and the long jump in the last Europeans in Berlin. Polly Mater in lane two. For France, the European 100-200 long jump champion three years ago, Angelina Lanza. That was in T46. In lane three for Serbia, the new European 200 silver in the javelin, Saska Sokolov. This is the reigning 100 champion in this category, Alicia Yeraman for Poland. In lane five for Russia, gold in the 400 meters this week for Anastasia Solovieva. Bronze in the two as well, and also gold in the Universal Relay last night, aiming for gold number three here. For Norway in six, six in the 200 meters here, Ida Louise Oberman in lane seven this week's European long jump champion for Russia, Alexandra Bogachaya. And in lane eight for the Czech Republic, fifth in the 200 meters this week, but silver in the 100, three years ago in the last Europeans in Berlin, Teresa. Yashkova. On your marks. So the coming together of two reigning European 100 meters champions. Only one title up for grabs here. Sokolov with gold in the 200 here and silver in the javelin this morning. Maton in one, Lanza in two, Sokolov three, Yerim in four, Solveva five, Oberland six, Mogachaya seven, Yashkova eight. The final of the women's 100 meters. T47. Seven. And away they go! Great start by Yeraman. Overland has started brilliantly too, but it's Yeraman pushing through. And now here goes Sokolov, has been hanging on. Sokolov moving up to get the double. 100 to add to the 200 to add to the javelin silver. And both defending European champions have been beaten. Saska Sokolov, sensational. Yeraman gets the silver. It's a lifetime best as well of 12.25. What a new star pre-Tokyo we found. Saska Sokolov had won bronze at the javelin at the last Europeans in 2018. Now, she's a double sprint champion. How about this for a story? She has been a handballer previously. She's also a sports coach. And how wonderfully coached is she to have gone from the javelin to the sprints to double glory? Yeremin has a lot to celebrate herself, even though she's no longer European 100 meters champion. Silver in the one and the two for her now, but she's done it in Poland. Brilliant start it was by Yeremin. Sokolov behind a bit of the start, but she came and came, overtaking Yeremin. Solaveva in third spot, but what a victory. She didn't really dive towards the line that much either. She didn't dip, but Sokolov has still got the goal. We saw her at the last Paralympic Games, only in the javelin. She came sixth in that. She'll be one of the Paralympic sprint candidates in Tokyo. Mogachaya was fourth, Yashkova fifth, but Saska Sokolov has had the week of her life. Yeremin in her category, extra reason to celebrate, European record, six PPs, Sokolov gold, Yeremin silver, Soloveva the bronze. Boy, oh boy. And we're going to wrap up well, with the next shot the for field. 63 as well. Three to go. Alan Davis is in front.
Tuzi with his sixth attempt in the bronze medal position. That's what he won in Berlin in 2018. In the last Euros. Remember the next Euros. Originally in the calendar for 2022. They've gone. 2024, the next one as the next two years will be world championship years to get back on rotation. Thirteen oh six, he stays third. What a battle for gold though! Alan Davis, as he was lying second at halfway, throws second last. 15 meters 17 a whopping throw to put him in front in round four he's followed up with a 1496 and to finish that's a bit short he'll take the red flag and he must wait he knew that it wasn't quite it Tom Hampshire will have the last say, and Hampshire will need to add eight centimeters onto his lifetime best of 15.10 to get the goal. It would be his first major championship title. Four times a European silver medalist. It'll be a fifth at the very least, or it could be his first goal. 15-17 the target. It needs to be a new world record in his category. He's given it a really good go. He's broken his own championship record from Berlin. But I don't think that's going to be enough. It had to be past his own world record line. And that's not it. Alan Davis takes his seventh European title. <laughs> Habscheid wraps up with 14.31. And Alan Davis keeps his great winning streak going. He is now a seven-time European champion to go with his seven world titles. Alan Davis gets the gold, 15 metres 17. Hubside the silver, 14.53 a championship record, and Tuzi in third. Cano Blanco with the long jump. Cano Blanco with a foul on his first. His second looks like a decent effort. He's at the bottom of the pile at the moment. That's great on the board. But has the 26 year old got himself up near the top? Oh, he's done better than that. 679 that puts him into the lead ahead of Zach Skinner. <laughs> Men's discus throw F11. Miroslav Matsia, his third attempt, his first 36.25. Then a foul. As he looks to extend his lead. Seven point one six. He does just that. He's now one meter and eight centimeters clear at the top.
Well, time now for the men's 100 meters T33 and 34. Category four go in this one. Two T33s and two T34s. Henry Maddy goes in lane three. He's a member of the British national basketball team. This man, Harry Jenkins. Won gold in 2014. Under 22 European Championships. He's the defending champion in the T33s. And this one, Stefan Bruch. Gold in 2018 in the T34 category. And James Freeman, the second of the Brits, 25 years of age from the Weir Archer Academy in London, his oh, first wow. major championships. So two categories in this. Henry Manny holds the T34 Set. championship record. And they get away nicely, and it is Henry Matty on the inside with the Dutchman Stefan Bruch, who's the defending T34 champion, who is trying to do his best to catch up on the back wheel of Matty, but it is going to be Henry Matty who's going to take it. Bruch in second. Matty, let's look at the time 16.29 seconds for him. So he's outside his own championship record in the T34 category, but he does. Take the gold medal. 16.28 is rounded down to Roosh in second, 16.69. And Jenkins coming home in 30.33 along with his compatriot, James Freeman. What a good start from Henry Matty. And he never looked back from there. It was actually Roosh who got away the quickest in the Orange of the Netherlands, but Matty had his number within five or ten meters so the man who took up canoe at the age of 10 before he switched across to athletics picked up another gold in Europe in his story career. They've come across 100, 800 and 400. This one again in the 100 metres. Taking back the title from Stefan Rusch who took the silver this time. Jenkins and Freeman in third and fourth respectively. So David Fernandez back at the men's shot put F57. He's the third of the athletes to throw. Twelve thirty-five was his second. Still the pole in Kakal who leads. After this, there'll be three more left to go in the field. Thomas Rubel not starting. Ah! Best so far, he's got two left, does the Spaniard. Well, he likes that one, the white flag went up. Another one who was a power lifter who took that up in 2003, got into para athletics in 2014, trains twice a week at the High Performance Center in Lille, in Spain, also in Oviedo and Tineo, where he's from. Club San Mateo in Oviedo, where he works out. Rafael Nadal is sporting hero. No surprises there. So that's his final throw. 
Fourth of this back in 2018. He's currently in second position. And the second position is where he'll stay, 12.50, so he's in a silver medal position, 45 centimetres behind Kakol of Poland, who's out in front. Well, at one stage, Nika Uwu Smith was leading the men's long jump T13, the category of least visual impairment, with that 6.59. Since then, Sack Skinner has gone 6.69. His fellow Spaniard Cano Blanco to 6.79. Is this going to be 6.89? Don't think so. We've got uh, four field events on right now. That fifth one, which just concluded with victory for Alan Davis. There's tons of action on the track as well. It's all crammed in on this last day for Big Gosh 2021. So lifetime best in that first round, 6.59. 6.41 was quite a decent, decent addition to it, frankly. Had a lifetime best of 6.23 going into it, so he's beaten it twice. It's like it's a Belarus has to wait. That's still being assessed manually now. And still, for Winston, Asasosa, Ikiwu, Smith. There's quite a delay because uh, Saukitz, interesting, has been told just to get off the track for the moment. That result has still not yet come through. And the more Saukitz looks at it, the more it might come up. Zach Skinner, also our former leader on 6.69. Leaders changed hands quite a bit early on. So Guerra Montero had gone out to 6.25, then along came Ikiwu, then Skinner. Now Cano Blanco is out in front. And the wait goes on for the middle place of the two Spanish. Salguero now down in fifth spot. Six metres 25, you'll have seen, has just come up. That again, just beyond his lifetime best, which means that Sarkitz now has a chance to take a tilt at the next attempt 624 is lifetime best set in round two it was six meters ten going into this tell you how he gets on later as now it's the final of the women's 400 meters t38 where Kadena Cox made glorious history in Rio. Ali Smith is the British representative in this final. The reigning world champion Margarita Goncharova is in this. So starting off in lane seven for Finland, first major championship. She was fifth in the long jump here for Vilma Bang. In lane six, going for a double. She's retained the European long jump title for Hungary, Luca Eckler. In lane five for Russia, the reigning world champion who picked up five gold medals at the Europeans in Swansea in 2014, Margarita Goncharova. 
in lane four for Great Britain. Silver in the 400 metres in Berlin three years ago. Sixth in the 100 metres here in Big Gosh, Ali Smith. And in lane three for Portugal, bronze in the 400 metres in Berlin. And three medals in the inaugural championships in 2003 in Assen, Maria Fernandez. Two of those were silvers, 200 and 400. Bronze in the 400 in Sydney, 2000. So it's Fernandez in three, Smith in four, Goncher over five, Eckler in six, and Berg in lane seven. The final of the women's 400 metres, T38. Um. Away first time. Left in the blocks quite a while. Goncharova's got away well. Eckler's got away very, very well. Sensational in the long jump. Silver in the 100 metres here. Bronze in the 200 in Berlin. And silver in the one and the two in the World Championships in Dubai. Goncharova and Eckler well to the fore. Berg not doing too badly. Ali Smith moving up for Great Britain as well. The accountant with Gilfred and Gudalming. AC coached by Chris Saar. Maria Fernandez trying to fight back for further glory. But it is Goncharova leading out Eckler, leading out Smith at the moment. That's the one, two, three. As they head in towards the final straight, it's the championship record holder. Marek Garita Goncharova for Russia. And Eckler's coming back at that. Eckler's coming back brilliantly, and Goncharova is beginning to tie up. Eckler in front of the final 20 metres, and Luca Eckler will be European champion on the double. The 400 added to the long jump, Goncher over the silver, Ali Smith, the bronze. It's a new European record as well. In fact, it's a world record. All the records are now hers. One minute point two seven. So the historic mark of Kadena Cox in Rio is gone. And Luca Eckler wins her first major title on the track. And it's a world record as well. One minute point two seven. That is just incredible. It is quite fabulous. She's made her name in the sand, but now she's lit up the track. Well, Goncharova was leading quite strongly, but as happens in coordination impairment, the body can shut down towards the end. The spasticity kicked in and she began to fade, and Eckler saw her chance. But with the pace Eckler had and the final time, he would have needed a world record from Goncharova to beat her. Goncharova locking down, sadly for her, Eckler overtaking, gold for Hungary, and she's got all the records suddenly. Really good pace. Nobody's gone faster than this in the T38 previously, and Luca Eckler has done something sensational. And it's such a smooth rhythm, and just looking at that by... Maybe she can go quite quicker than that. She's gone quicker than anyone else in history in this. One minute, 0.27, a new world record. Got her over the silver, and Ali Smith, the bronze. Everybody, Bar Fernandez with a, a lifetime best. Well, it's funny, I saw that flash up as a European record. And then I thought, well, yes, but Kadena Cox is European, so it must be a world record too. And it was. Oh, that's just terrific. She's a lot to be proud of. She's been, I mean, a great competitor in the few championships since she's broken through, particularly in the long jump, but she's now brought herself to a new stratosphere. Maybe Zach Skinner can do the same in the long jump. He's lying second, 6.69. Cano Blanco overtaking him with a 6.79. And Skinner's one big. A tentative reaction. But I think he's done very well there. 
689 is lifetime best. Championship record is 691 from Pierre Johnson seven years ago. He's found himself in a big battle with Ika Umu and Cano Blanco. 669 has him in second. Has him in the lead. And it's a new championship record for Zach Skinner. Well, there's well, plenty more. Spray. Track events coming up as well. We've got the men's 1500 meters T38 coming up shortly. But the men's discus throw F11 continues. Miroslav Madsia still leads this man in second position. Alvaro Del Amacano. His fourth attempt. Ah! I don't think he likes that. Well, 36.08. It is the mark to beat. His first was a foul. His second was in the 32s. This one, though, judging by his reaction, he didn't like it. He only started competing two years ago at a senior international level. Well, 32.70, so the worst of the three that he's picked up marks for so far. So he stays in second place. And Maroslav Madzia of Poland, who's in front, looking to extend. But that won't happen. So that's a foul. So two fouls for Madzia. It can be a dangerous old competition, this one. So no changes yet to the positioning. Marinkovic has dropped down into the bronze medal position. It's the final of the men's 1500 meters T38. Coordination impairment. One of the great para champions is in this. You'll see him immediately. Michael McKillop, the four times Paralympic, nine times world, twice European champion. It's only his third Euros ever. Alongside him, the reigning European champion from Berlin, Redouan Anouni Bouzidi for France. Inside him from Ireland, seventh in the 1500 meters in the last Euros in Berlin, David Levy. For Germany, bronze in the 1500 meters at the Euros in Berlin, Felix Kruseman. The first major championship for Norway's 15-year-old Skjalg Holtzold. For Denmark, sixth in the 1500 meters of the last Euros in Berlin, Anders Lagergren. For Poland, a first major championship for Robert Sverna. And for France on the inside, bronze in the 400 meters in the last Euros in Berlin. Seventh in the 200 final, Renault Clerc. The final of the men's 1500 meters, T38. So it's Clerc, Sverna, Lagergren, Konsun, Kruseman, Levy, Anuni, Buzidi, and Michael McKillop, who had his first championship defeat in years at the Worlds 
in Berlin, but he's not been beaten by a European since 2005. His last Euros in Swansea in 2014. It's the first time he's competed at a European Championships. That's on the same year as the Paralympic Games. Won gold in the 8 and the 50. And he has won every Paralympic final he's been in. Four out of four. Anuni Bazudi has uh, a title to defend, though. Based in Amiens. Gold in that 1500 in Berlin. 12th in the World Championship final, though. Where the standard rocked it up. And at the moment, it's France, Ireland, France. Krusman a little bit behind. And Tolson beginning to stretch out a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Hanuni Bazidi looks like he's trying to take this one too. But Killup, I think he's gone with the idea that if I can get out in front and force the pace, I may make the Irishman struggle somewhat. But McKillop is only less than, what, 10 metres behind Hanuni Bazidi at the moment. So that one out there is going to be the clear-cut race for the gold medal if it stays anything like this, heading into the last 400 or so. But they're coming down. They'll have... Two laps left to go. The field are well spread. There's a bunch at the back. There's McKillop, who's about 15 metres behind Anuni Bazzini with two laps left to go. So they'll head down now for 800 metres, remarkably. They've only done 700 metres so far. So they're off now. There has to be a move from someone at that back pack because if they don't move, then they're not going to have any hope of catching up from that front. But it looks like they're happy to settle for a bit of a battle for the bronze medal at the back but Killip is about 30 metres or so in front of that chasing pack there you can see led by Claire and Levy the second of the Irishman is sitting way back second from the end and it's Anuni Bazzini with around 600 metres to go who's looking very solid and has to be said but Killip though he's always very good at measuring his running and drawing people in towards the end so 500 meters left to go when they come around here and Eddie Bazzini will be taking the bell as he looks to continue and claim another European record but McKillop well he looks like he's struggling somewhat towards the back and Eddie Bazzini looks very very good indeed Will as he comes down to take that bell and then Bazzini leads for France at the bell the man from Amiens the bell coming for Michael McKillop now the Perennial champion for the Paralympic crowns, nine world titles. He's 30 metres back. Claire in third of the bell. It's Lagergren in fourth and Kreuzmann in fifth. Little gap back to Levy now. He's leading that next pack for Ireland. But it's Anuni Usidi who's got a really good advantage here of around 35 metres over Michael McKillop. He's won so many gold medals in his career. 15 major titles overall. Massive gap. McKillop is so far ahead of everyone else except Dunini, who's leading the way for France here. 34 metres the gap between him and McKillop and coming into the closing straight. It was an excellent win for him in Berlin three years ago. But now in Bidgos, it's a win by beating Michael McKillop. Coming into the closing straight, Redouan Anuni Buzini takes the European title. Michael McKillop wins silver for Ireland. And it's a big race for third. Looks like it's going to be the other Frenchman Claire to take that in third, just ahead of Kreuzmann in fourth. Fernau was in sixth, Lagergren in fifth, Levy in seventh. It's a European record. He held it himself, Unini Busidi, at T38. McKillop has been stepping up from T37, a more restrictive coordination impairment category for many years and beating all the 38s. He's still the best 37 around, but it's silver for Michael McKillop today. And Redouan and Unini Busidi is a back-to-back -back European champion. They can celebrate right up in the northeast around Amiens. They've got a Notre Dame Cathedral of their own there. Pascal Marchat, his coach, 405.40 his lifetime best, which was outside of World Para Athletics competition. And he just went for it. 
He went early, he opened up a, as big a lead as he could, and he kept it going. That was the key thing. And he's the European champion for a second time. McKillop gets the silver, his fifth all-time European medal. And Claire will have to try and keep himself coordinated there. He might have stepped off the track. That's why we're seeing that. But he came through in third, third over the line. He has the bronze for now. Ahead of Kreuzman in fourth. Lagergren and Sverner were next over the line. Clark gets the bronze at the age of 20. It's the first time Michael McKillop has been beaten by a European in a championship race for 16 years. Well, we're still waiting for the result to be calibrated as we go back to the long jump. Cala Blanca, the former leader, now in the silver medal spot on 679. Well, that's good from Cala Blanca. But he's trying to chase Zach Skinner. And Skinner with his last effort was something special indeed. It was a championship record for Skinner of 692. Six seventy nine, this man with his second. He's got something to make up. Six ninety, he's two centimeters short. A season best though for Cano Blanco. This race is on, well and truly. And here comes Zach Skinner. So with his last he was into the lead with a championship record. And this one to try and extend his lead and that record. Oh, that looks big. Might have just done something to his hamstring there as well when he went across. I hope for his sake he hasn't. And it looks like he's gone over the board there and just slightly. You can see there when he pushes down, it went into the plaster scene. It was a good jump otherwise. So no improvement for Skinner. Five margins, aren't they? Ben's disc is throwing F11. Delamecano with his fifth. He's in third position currently with a bronze medal. Complete visual impairment category. Have to have balance, knowledge of his surroundings, and strength all at the same time. Hard enough to do that when you've got full vision. Something special. 35 32, though, that not as special as he wants. Stays third. And here's the man who's in the gold medal position, Miroslav Madzia. As Poland looks to secure another gold medal, they're currently sitting behind Russia at the top of the medal count. So Madzia, who's been competing since 2002. Well, that one's fine. Certainly no foul out in the field.
Lifetime best set this year of 37.70. He did pick up a silver in the discus in Swansea back in 2014. He was fifth in Berlin. He picked up a shot put bronze on that occasion as well. 35-54, so he doesn't improve. He's got one throw left, but he still leads this F11 discus throw competition. Shot put at 57, continuing as well. Shapatov in first position with his third throw, 38.51 but he's open up Thirteen seventy nine for a Shapatov, a lifetime best for him. Well, it's the final of the men's five thousand meters T fifty four. One massive name in this, a monster galaxy of gladiatorial racers, Marcel Hoog, the twelve time. European champion. Nine world crowns to his name and those two Paralympic titles in Rio. Well, starting on the outside for Great Britain, silver in the 1500 meters in his first track championship. It's Dan Sibri. Fourth in the 400 meters. And last night he was sixth in the 800 final. In lane five for Russia, seven medals, none of them gold, however, four silver, three bronze in Grisetto in 2016, bronze in the 1500 meters here. Alongside him for Switzerland, the double Paralympic champion, Marcel Hoog. Next up for France, silver in the 800 meters here in Bidgosh. Silver in the 15 and the Universal Relay in Berlin, Julian Cassily. Next for Russia, silver in the 4 and the 8, bronze in the 1 here for Vitaly Gritsenko. And on his inside, bronze in the 5,000 metres in the 2012 European Championships in Stadskanal, Ebba Blikfels. The final of the men's 5,000 meters, T54. The fastest of the wheelchair races and such an exciting category. And Marcel Hoog takes the lead immediately, trying to make it as unexciting as possible. His first titles coming in 2005, when he won four gold, two bronze. He actually competed at a Europeans without winning a single medal, but that was when he was so, so young, a 17-year-old back in 2003 in the first ever Europeans. Cipri has had a terrific championship. He's, he's mainly been a marathoner. He hasn't done a European or a Worlds in the track before this. Hook has already won the 800 and the 1500. This is his last event in Bidgos. And if he were to win it, then he would repeat his successes from Berlin three years ago. As Europeans prior to that, the 2014s in Swansea, when he won these three titles, but also went in the 400 and won bronze. A run at the front for Vitaly Gritsenko, who is the only T53 who stepped up among the 54s to racing. It's possibly the only category that can step up and be competitive. We've seen it with Brent Lakatos, with Tobrono, with Madison de Rosario. The wheelchair racing here has been as exciting as usual. Kritsenko getting his run at the front. He won gold in the four and the eight in Grisetto in 2016. He's Moscow-based. Hook having a little look around. And is he going to do his old thing of maybe wheeling away, trying to burn the rest off? And fall back a little and try and burn them out all over again. Well, Sidbury trying to do a little bit of man-marking. 
been based in Almeria for uh, quite a bit of time on and off. And he's emerged well at the age of 27 as a really decent wheelchair racer. And he comes through with 10 laps to go of this men's 5,000 metres final. Hug in second, Kasli third, Vichinov four, Gritsenko five, and Blickfeld in six spots. Yeah, Blickfeld's been just slipped off the back there, hasn't he? Well, he likes playing chess, as Daniel Sibri, so if he's going to go for it, he needs to make a check, mate, and not just check. As we head to the women's javelin throw, F54 will come back to the 5,000 metres, T54 in just a moment of two's time. It's Bogacheva who's up first. Already 14.54 with her first. So first of 14.54, again the seeding category, so all six are at the same time. 14.86. A new championship record for Bogacheva with just her second. Well, it's Marcel Hoog still out in front of this men's 5,000 metres final, but there's still around eight and a half laps to go. Kasli in second place, Bichinov in third. Sidbri has had his little run at the front in fourth. And then a gap of around 40 metres back towards Gritsenko. Blick fell right at the back. You might remember last night we were saying Hoog was an eight-time champion. Well, we've we've had a rustle around the really old Euro Power Athletics Championships and uh, we found uh, another four gold medals for Hoog down the back of the sofa. And it was in one of those championships in which Blickfeld has won his only international championship medal. Eight laps to go. Cassily having his run at the front. Bronze in London in the 5,000 metres ahead of Hoog. Rio, where Hoog, having been one of, but it was just one of those weird things that he'd won everything in the sport apart from a Paralympic gold. Don't we don't need to mention that ever again? Became the golden bullet in the 800 metres, won the marathon as well. Him, Kasli, Bichinov and Sipri are well tucked in together at the moment. And quite a gap back towards Gritsenko. Do you remember going and back spilled. to 2015 when Julian Kasli was involved in that massive pile-up at Doha in the World Championships and they were called back to their hotel after they were there already back in the evening. Kasli had come a cropper and he'd ripped his shirt. He had a massive rash down the side of his body as we go this time to the men's javelin throw F41. For those of shorter stature, it's Mester of Germany. So good first up throw from Mester. 34 years of age. Champion in 2014 and 2018. Well, 36 31. So a season best. Extends his lead at the top. As we head back, and it's Castle now, who I was talking about just a moment or two ago. They went back for that 5,000 metres final when it was a protest, and back they come. And they went again. Marcel Hoog was involved in that as well. And Marcel Hoog is out in front now. So just under two kilometres left in this 5,000 metres T54 race. And well, with Hoog, he's only got two paces, hasn't he? Very slow or very fast. So Hoog out in front. It's Kasli. 
Bichnok and Sibri. And then Krishenko has been left off way back, as is Blickfeld, who may even get lapped along the way. Discus throw F11. Madzia, who has been in the lead for the whole way the pole. Been quite some performance from him. As Poland looked to chase down Russia at the top, 36.06, so he stays in first position. And it is still Marcel Hoog leading them out, all tightly punched together. Three and a half laps to go in this men's 5,000 metres T54 final. We've got four candidates for three medals. Marcel Hoog for Switzerland. The silver bullet. Julien Gasly for France. Alexei Bichinok for Russia. Dan Sidbury for Great Britain. Three laps to go. Hoog, who is a 23-time major championship winner. He picked up the Laureus Award as well four years back for his excellence. That was in Monaco. This is in Bidgos. Hoku looks in very good fettle ahead of Tokyo. Kasli has had a good championships here with that 800 meters silver. Hoog with gold in the eight and the 15. Sidbury with silver in the 15. Bichinok with bronze in the 15. But the main pace, the main race, is still coming. When they come round this time, it'll be two laps to go. And the Cold War will thaw out, and the real proper racing will begin. Hug leading Cassidy, leading Bichinok, leading Sidbury. They've all had their run at the front. Gitsenko and Blickfeld left behind to joust for fifth. This is all about the gold. This is about the other three trying to find a way to get past this man at the front and to leave the silver bullet in silver. If such a thing is possible, heading in towards the closing straight for the penultimate time, it's Marcel Hoog leading the way for Switzerland, ahead of Cassidy, ahead of Pichinok, ahead of Sibri. It's as you were for the last six laps. They've left Hoog out in front. Hoog will think about his time to go. Can the others force their way out in front first of all? He keeps glancing behind. Little glances at the big screen. There's the bell with Marcel Hoog out in front. Castley well placed in second. Beach knocks a little bit now. 300 meters to go. Sidbury from the back has shot forward. So now they have to move out anyway because they've got a lapped athlete right in front. Who going out wide? Kasli going out wider. Sidbury the widest of all right now. It's Marcel Hoog leading this 5,000 metres final. And Sidbury's trying to make a big Marcel Hoog trying to defend his third successful time of the week. Bichinok making the big break. Kasli and comes so close to the 800. But Hoog will not be beaten. Not this week. Marcel Hoog retains his third European title of the week. Bichinok the silver. Kasli the bronze. And Sibri was fourth. They trotted along for 4,800 metres. And then the cat got the mouse again. Who got the gold again? Gold number three of the week. His third retained title of the week. It is his 13th European crown. And in his last 10 European Championship finals, he has won nine. We can go further back in time to 2005, but you can calculate that yourself. Who took his time today? Kasseli so close to overtake him in the 800 meters final. It was Bichinok who had the best attempt this time. 
but just couldn't force his way through. And those watching around the world ahead of Tokyo know that Marcel Hoog, when he goes onto the start line along the greats from Thailand and Canada and the United States, that he's in great form and he's ready to fight. Bittenok came so close, but the respect is always there and they're going through the tactics, reliving the race fabulously. Marcel Hoog. European title number 13, unlucky for everyone else. Hook the gold, Bittenok the silver, and Cassily the bronze. Sibri missed out by 14 hundredths of a second. Gritsenko fifth and Blickfeld in sixth. Can tell you as well, there's been an updated result for the men's 1500 meters final. It does not affect the winner, Enuni Buzidi, with that new European record of 404.39, breaking his old T38 mark from Dubai in February, so not that old, by three seconds. Gold for Enuni Buzidi. Silver for Ireland's Michael McKillop and bronze for Anna Clark of France. The fourth placer, Felix Kreuzerman, has been disqualified for obstruction. So Lagergren promoted a fourth, Sverner to fifth, and Ireland's David Levy now to sixth. So the bench top put F57. Rigitski of Poland is in second position. All six at the same time. Miroslav Badzia taking out the F11 disc as we saw a short while ago. This is seated shot put. So 13.90, that is a season best that puts him in the first position. The Shabatov has been relegated to silver and Kakal down to bronze. While Fernandez is out of the medals altogether. 13.90 season pest for Janusz Wyszynski as he takes gold in that. So Cano Blanco in the long jump. Can he win the gold? Six meters 90 he's gone out to in the fourth round. Needs a few more centimeters to leap out in front and that's a foul. And it's silver for Cano Blanco of Spain. And the defending European champion has been beaten. And he was well onto the plasticine on this occasion. Cano Blanco denied. And so a sensational victory for Zach Skinner. As he does the double in the 100 and the long jump. Zach Skinner gets his second gold medal of the week for Great Britain. 6.92, a new championship record. Cano Blanco, the silver. And Iku Smith has had such a, a great championship, such a great long jump. Lepetieva in the javelin, F54. All the throws coming at once. Well, what a, what a career Lebedieva has had. They have such a fabulous talent spotting program in Ukraine. So confirmation of the men's discus throw F11, Miroslav Badzia with his first ever European title takes the gold. Nestorenko with silver and Delamacano picks up the bronze.
zdecydowanie by znać społecznego oraz prawidłowego noszenia maseczek zakrywających nos oraz usta. Spainer enjoying themselves at these championships. They're having a good time of it indeed. And they're unearthing some fine young talent. It's all built into the Paralympic Games in August and September on what is a wonderful final day here in Bidgosh. It's been great how much noise those athletes have been making who have competed already in their competitions. They'll be making noise as well for the Turkish athlete Ilkin. Third position, his final throw, three of them so far are fouls. Well, we're into the final round of this. Mesta leading on 36-31. Gaspar second, 36-02. Ilkin trying to find almost two metres above that uh, previous mark of 33-56 to get higher. 34, 34 is not enough, and it's the bronze for him. A Leopard Diego's throw, by the way, in that women's javelin F54. She won the European discus in Berlin. That was a European record of 1183. So Gaspar now for Croatia. Needs to beat 36 31 to overtake Mester. Otherwise, Mester is champion. The wait to see if he leaps up into gold. He might have done it. He needs half a meter. 36.02, it's Silber for Gasper, and Matthias Mester retains his European title. It's his third gold in four European championships, and in the other one, it was Silver. So Mester's victory lap It's a good solid throw. They've got a brilliant uh, field program. He didn't care about that in the end. It's a red. The former world athletics champion, Steffi Neres, has been involved in coaching for nigh on 15 years while she was still a, a professional athlete. And as we know, Germany and both circuits are just ace in the javelin right now and have been for a long time. Mester is the champion ahead of Gaspar and Ilkin. Mester, 36-31, takes the goal for Germany. Gaspar, the silver for Croatia. And Omar Farouk Ilkin, the bronze for Turkey. Women's javelin throw, F-54. It's Nezura. In third position at the moment. Bogacheva leads. After a championship record of 1486. So Lebedeva, the European record, 1183. Nizura of Belarus. The third of five to go. from Minsk, been competing since the age of 40, back in 2015. 
senior debut back in 2016 in the Grand Prix event in Belarus. She won this event back in 2018 in Berlin. Self medal in the championships before that. She certainly has some stiff competition. She actually did the double in Berlin, winning the javelin and the shot put. Eleven ninety-eight, the distance when she won that javelin throw in Berlin. Thirteen sixty-seven, her lifetime best she set this year. So we're ready to go. Warm-ups completed. The real action getting underway. So ahead of her, Lebedieva holds that F53 European and Championship record. And in the F54s, it's Bogacheva with the same records respectively. Lebedieva, the only F53 taking part in this one. And Nizura has already gone ahead of Lebedieva with her first throw, 12.05, so puts her in the silver medal position. That one isn't going to be a mark. So three throws, so then get to reposition herself, maybe have a bit of advice called out from the coach, Sergei Gribinov. Good story. She travelled around her country to watch para athletics and try and determine what she'd be best suited to. Javelin seems right up her street. Fantastic record. Shot put as well. Yet to compete at the Paralympic Games, though. So 12.05, a foul, 12.49. So Bogacheva still some distance in front. As we move back to the track at the women's 200 metres T11 final, and one of those ladies you saw there, the European record holder, Libby Clegg will go in this one for Great Britain. Now remarkably, besides the fact that she's actually a Paralympic champion, Greg, she's never actually started a race at the European Championships. Ayala Didai will go from lane seven. She's already taken silver in the 100 and bronze in the long jump here. Bruleglem, who took bronze in the 100 meters, the French woman. We'll go from a lane five, and there is Libby Clegg from Stockport in the north of England. Became a mother two years ago. Right back in action straight away. Yulia Pavlenko, who's had a brilliant championships gold, the 100 gold, the long jump with a championship record, that 100 metres. She's had a championship record in the heat. So she will go from lane one and provide stiff opposition, I'm sure as Libby Clegg looks to become a European champion. Fantastic record from Clegg. Gold in the 2011 Worlds, Commonwealth Games, 100 metre champion as well, having won that in 2014 in Glasgow. Now she looks to become a European champion in the women's 200 metres T11 complete visual impairment category. So Pavlenko in one, Clegg in three, Uglegem in five, and Didai goes in seven. It is Clegg 
and Pavlenko on her inside have got away very quickly. And also on the outside, Didai has kicked really well around that bend. And as they straighten up, it's going to be Pavlenko who leads, heading into the final 100 metres. Pavlenko and Clegg. And Rulaglem is making a run for it, but she's just tightened up. And here comes Clegg. Pavlenko looks like she's done herself an injury, but she's struggling there. It's Clegg who's going to take it in a time of 27.42 seconds. Well, Pavlenko looked like she had it. And I perhaps think they may have lost that synchronicity between her and the guide. At one point there, I thought she may have done a hamstring. She just stumbled somewhat. Lifetime best for Bulaglem in second place, taking a silver. And Pavlenko has had to settle for the bronze when she looked as though she might be heading for a gold. But Libby Clegg does it. 27.41. She takes the title with Chris Clark, her guide. They've come as a European champion for the first time. Well, what a race of ifs and buts. Didi kicked around the corner. Bulaglem looked like she was coming again. Pavlenko then looked like she was going to win it. While Clegg the whole time just kept her momentum. At that point, you thought Dida is doing really well. Pavlenko's out in front. And just watch here what maybe happens. I think they might have just clipped heels with each other, which put her off her stride. And then from there, they're not in the correct stride pattern. And that caused a few problems for them. And Bulaglem snatches silver. And then Pavlenko, just have a look on the right-hand side there. And they just struggled as Libby Clegg and Chris Clark keep that synchronicity I talked about and across the line for the victory. That comes with experience, that comes with trusting each other and knowledge of the racing game and Libby Clegg's got plenty of that. So Clegg adds to her Commonwealth Games. Paralympic Games and World Championship titles. She's now a European title holder. Takes first in 27.41. Bulaglem second with a lifetime best. And Pavlenko in third by Didi was disqualified. Well, it's quite something because even with 15 metres to go, I didn't think Clegg was going to win that. Great recovery, but just so, oh, so unfortunate for Pavlenko that she would tie up and actually also unfortunate for Deadeye even though she was run out of it that she's uh, been DQ'd another terrific night of athletics we've still got quite a bit to go there's one last field final about to start, and it is the women's discus throw. F41 for athletes of short stature, and there are a couple of athletes of shorter stature in this. This is F41, but a few 40s are involved. Five for Poland, Montenegro, France, the Netherlands, and Ireland. Renata Swivinska for Poland, who would gold in the shot, third Europeans in a row in which she's done that silver in the shot in the last two world championships silver in the discus in her last two Europeans Zubinska has a lifetime best just short of uh, 25 meters this is really well stacked actually it's uh, a very good competitive final everybody in this has won European medals, four of them, actually five of them, all of them, have been European champion at one time or another. So Suwinska hanging on and trying to get the technique uh, little bit right there's Neve McCarthy for Ireland who is the defending champion having claimed gold in Berlin it was silver in Grosseto 
And in her three world championships, she's won a silver and two bronze. 19 minutes 29 to get Swavinska underway. Next up, Mariana Goranovic of Montenegro, who was fourth in the shot. She's never meddled in the discus before. She's uh, won a whole series of silvers at European level in the shot. So Goranovic at the age of 32, uh, 2098 is her lifetime best. Season's best is 1943. Slight delay, but now she can have her go. Twenty sixteen and twenty eighteen, she's won silver in the shot. There will be a number of athletes who won the same medal at the same games that you might be wondering why, but there are two categories in play here. As we go to the final of the women's 200 meters T12, the medium category of visual impairment. We have three champions from this week's Europeans all in this, plus a silver medalist. And that silver medalist is in lane seven for Spain, Alba Garcia, silver in the 100 meters. In lane five for Russia, the Javelin European champion from this week, Anna Kulinic Sorokina, who has now won gold in her last three European championships. In three, this week's European champion in the 100 meters, Nagore Volgado for Spain. And in lane one for Turkey, this week's 400 meters champion, that's Sevda Kilinc Zirikoglu. With a guide, Okon Yilmaz. The other guides, Juan Ragavaro for Spain, oh. Sergei Petrochenko for Russia, Jonathan Orozco Moreno for Spain. They do receive medals as well. Wasn't always the case. So Kilinc, Sirikolu in one, Folgado in three, Kulinic Sorokina in five, and Garcia Balagan in seven. The final of the women's 200 meters, T12, and all with guides. Kilinchen one, Fulgado three, Kulinic Sorokino five, Garcia seven. Underway in the women's 200 meters, T12, solid start by Kulinic. Thorakina and Volgado alongside her in this parade of champions in this 200 final. As they straighten up, Volgado looking good. The 100 metre queen from earlier in the week. Kulinic Sorokina is gaining a bit of ground on her though. And Kulinic Sorokina out in front marginally for Russia. Volgado fighting back. But Sorokina is going to take it. It's Volgado in second and Garcia in third. Russia one, Spain two and three. 25 6-8 the winning time and Spasibo it is lifetime best for Volgado the 100 meter champion that in 26.19 Garcia Balagan in third her most successful championship a silver and a bronze for her two golds for Kulinic now a gold and a silver for Volgado a gold for killing it so medals all around Anna Kulinic Sorokina has now claimed four gold medals in her last three in her last uh, five gold medals in her last three 
Europeans. And just like in 2016, she does a double with the javelin. It was the four by one then, but it's an individual effort here. She started really well, Folgado Garcia in the middle lane alongside one Ragavaro. Looked very strong at this point, hit the front on the bend. But then Kulinic Sorokina came back and back and back. And having made a name previously as a fine javelin thrower, this is her first individual major championship track medal. She's previously won golds either in the javelin or in a relay, but now she's doing it in her own right. With a guy too, of course, Sergei Petrichenko. I think it's right to say she's waited a, a while for that, but it's come now. She's cracked it as an individual athlete on the track. Volgado having a brilliant first ever Europeans. That's her in lane three, having won the 100 and edged out Garcia Falagan in that. Well, she's done the same, but only for silver on this occasion. Anna Kulinic Sorokina is the champion for Russia. Volgado the silver for Spain. Alba Garcia the bronze for Spain. Well, maybe Big Gosh will get another chance uh, somewhere down the line of hosting another major para athletics championship when the world is normal again. And it really would be interesting to see the level of support in the crowd. So Van der Goe, 19.39 in her opening round. She's in the bronze medal position at the moment for France, having won gold in the shot in Berlin, bronze this time around. Well, Van der Goe with 19.39 in round one, the longest throw coming from Lara Bars of the Netherlands, a championship record, 24.07. Van der Goe with 19.39. Bars is an F40. But she's quite a thrower. That's another excellent throw. Despite what I said earlier, she actually has not won a major championship gold before at international level. Lots of silvers, though and Paralympic bronze in the shot in Rio. Her best discus result and her only medal in the discus was European bronze in Berlin in 2018. Wonder if that stadium's still standing. They were meant to knock it. Baz is knocking the opposition. Another championship record, 24-19. Neve McCarthy for Ireland, 10 metres 45 in the opening round. It went a bit wrong. She's a solid 30 metre thrower on her day. Is it her day? That's a bit more like what she wanted to do. And she can put her opening throw to bed now. Laura Bars with that excellent throw of 24-19, giving her a good prospect of her best ever result in a major championship. But Neve McCarthy, very competitive in that. 27-96, and Neve McCarthy goes into the lead for Ireland. And that's what she wanted to do last time. As Swavinska is next to throw for Poland. She 
Fraser got herself in contention with that 23-47 last time around. And the no throw in the opening round from uh, Gosha Wilkopolski. She set a world record in Dubai, but finished eighth because like this, it was a combined category. Well, Swavinska, that world record is gone. 24.77, it's a new world record in her category, and she goes into the silver medal position. Swavinska being in F40, and her old mark was 24.65. It's a new championship record as well. It's a new European record. And she goes second. Time now for the men's 200 metres T35 final, and this is a field that is absolutely stacked. The world European record holder, Ihor Sviatov, and the championship record holder, Dmitry Safranov. Well, that was a shot, wasn't it? I might need to lie down for a bit. So three Russians and one Ukraine. Maybe lying down after this race, it might be so good. Zetev of Russia goes on the outside, the 18 year old. That was Glasian, 2016 European Championship gold medalist. And Sviatov, the world and, record, world and European record holder, I should say. Already bronze in the 100 here. Dmitry Safranov, he took gold already here in the 100 metres, equaling the world record. He is the championship record holder. This should be an absolute belter. Go nowhere. The youngster is very tiered on the outside in lane six. Clashing in five. Sviatov in four. And Safranov on the inside in lane three. Looking to do the one, two hundred double. And away they go, and he gets away to a very good start. Indeed, does Safranov. He's already sneaking up on the inside there of Sviatov. And on the outside, it's Kratov, who's looking good, but he's just fallen back and really pushing now through as the Ukrainian Sviatov, who's the world and European record holder. And he looks like he's going to hold off Safranov. So Safranov's not going to do the double, is he? He might get him on the line. Oh, that's close. That is a very close finish, I think. Sviatov possibly got there but right at the end of the last five meters Dmitry Safranov or well, Sviatov has it in a championship record but just and it must be millimeters in that one he looked like he was going to hold on for a good solid five meter victory but he just at the end tightened up and Safranov came through but a championship record for Sviatov he's broken the record held by Dmitry Safranov, so he has all three records now, the world, the European and the championship records of boot. But my oh my, that was close. They all got away well. The youngster on the outside, Zvayatev, ran the bend all right, but there is where Sviatov won the race. He blasted through that period there around the 100 metre mark, and at this point, you think, well, he's got it. And he just tightens up and Safranov comes from nowhere. Oh, that's tight. Extremely tight with millimetres in that one. He'll be hurting a bit too, Paul Safranov. He took a bit of a tumble there on his arm and shoulder. That hurt. My oh my, that's tight, isn't it? The chest of Sviatov getting across the line there. 0 0.02 with a second difference. Well, a lifetime best for Safranov. He broke his own record as it was. As did Kalashian. As did. Up. They all broke the old championship record time.
but Sviatovic yeah. takes it. A new record of 23-1-4. Safranov in second. And Kalasio picks up the bronze. All lifetime bests. Wow. You find yourself saying wow a lot in this sport, don't you? Just another spectacular week. And it's not even the biggest event of the year. How much are we all looking forward to Tokyo 2020 and the Paralympic Games? And the other thing that's on before it. Now, Neve McCarthy. Leading for Ireland, 27.96 in round two. She's clear of uh, Stravinska by three metres. And that looks further. She set a new championship record when she won gold last time. She's well in form now. 31.76 in Berlin it was. We didn't get to see that first round throw that didn't go right, but everything since then has. And this is looking like a large lead. She now has gone beyond 30 meters, and she's five meters clear of everybody else's lifetime best. 30-0-3. She's on the way to defending a title. Well, she's very busy in Cork. She's uh, done biology at UCC, but now working in all manner of things. She she does quite a lot of motivational speaker, at least she did around the time of the last championships. Stravinska currently leading the race for the silver medal. Rykovic for Montenegro in the women's javelin throw F54. All throws coming at once. They've, uh, they've a tidy enough team, Montenegro. Rykovic, who's been involved in table tennis for quite a while as well. She's finished fourth in both the uh, javelin and the shot put in the last Euros. She's up in a third with her first row and not that very far away from the top two. And she's the last to throw, by the way. So Rykovic with a third attempt needs to add about half a meter on in order to climb up into the top two. This is her best result in international power athletics. She will be a medalist for the first time. Nezura of Belarus in the silver medal position and Bogacheva with our championship record that we saw earlier, leading on 1486. She's getting closer. That was 1232. It's the final of the women's 200 meters, T64. It's an all Dutch affair. Belena van Gaanswinkel and Kimberly Alcamada. Alcamada first onto the scene at the last World Championships in Dubai, where she won silver in the 200 meters behind van Gaanswinkel and bronze in the 100 behind the winner. Well. Alcamada 
going in five. And Van Gansewinkel, who's won silvers already this week in the 100 and the long jump. She's the reigning 100 and 200 champion in this. And with Fleur Young winning the 100 and the long jump, both in world records. And Marlou Van Ryan on the scene. They four top athletes. Three places on the team for Tokyo. Van Gansewinkel in four, Alcamada in five in this women's 200 meters yeah. and away they go good start from the two of them and Gansawinkel priming herself up alongside Alcamada for now they know each other so well they race against each other they train alongside each other in the national team and Gansawinkel out in front Alcamada in second place tightening the gap slightly but Vaganza Winkle just has enough, and Alcamada slowing down before the line. 28, 26.80 the winning tie for Vaganza Winkle. Well, it's a super national team that the Dutch have. And if you think about the trail that Marlou and Ryan blazed in London and Lyon and into Doha and Rio. And then Van Gansenwinkel emerged there and started winning medals here and there. Then double European champion. And now she has a gold in this. Having won gold on the double in the 100 and the 200 in the last Europeans. Alcamada wasn't in the Dutch team by that stage. Came through in the last Worlds 18 months ago. You just wouldn't like to bet which of those four great athletes isn't going to make it. Champions all, medalists all, record holders across the board. Van Gansenwinkel holds the championship record in this of 26.12. She was looking at the clock. It was kind of like a world record time trial for her. And Alcamada trying to get a lifetime best too. And of course, winning. Van Gansenwinkel gets the victory. 26.79 it's been rounded down to in Kimberly Alcamada 27.10 and when you consider that she tapped a table tennis player on the shoulder at a talent spotting event and said you could be an athlete and that woman is now the European javelin champion she's a talent spotter as well and it'll be a very strong Dutch team for Tokyo. They've just built it around. Very good coaching, excellent athletes, tremendous positivity, great facilities. It all helps, all plays a part. Rykovic rounding up in the javelin as she tries to get into the top two. Yeah, she's the last to go. Trying to chase down Nazira and Bogacheva. In his second and first positions, respectively. So she has three more attempts currently. There you go. 12.49, Nazira Bogacheva. 14.86 at the top of the pile. Lara Bars, the former leader, now in the bronze medal position. Fifth round of the six in the women's discus F41 for athletes of short stature. She's about a meter away from a lifetime best. An ambassador for the Dutch National Lottery. She's working in communications as well as at the Dutch Olympic Association. I'll tell you what, the Dutch always have great kits as well. That's a brilliant shirt. I mean, I'm not saying it's up there with Euro 88, but it's not far off. 
Are you going to ask for one? I might dip, nip down during the next couple of races and ask nicely and be told no nicely. Here's Swavinska. Well, she's in world record form, 24.77, beating her previous mark by 12 centimeters. That's a good throw. It's close to a new world record mark, but might just be somewhat short. 24.04, she stays in the silver medal position. Neve McCarthy's in the gold medal position for now, as she finished in Berlin three years ago. 30 meters 03, her impressive third round mark which is a metre and a half outside the championship record with which she won in Berlin. Looks to be a little bit shorter. She uh, had a no throw in round four. That didn't affect her at all, though. Twenty-eight, thirty-seven, which on its own would have been enough for top spot. Every throw she's had that's counted, apart from the first one. As we go into the final round. Well, it was at the Friedrich Ludwig Jan Sport Park. That gold was secured for Neve McCarthy three years ago. Goranovic has had three no throws. The uh, shot is her preferred discipline. It's the one she has most success in anyway. But for the first time in three Euros, she's going to leave without a medal. She finished fourth in the shot. She's fifth in this discus. She will have the satisfaction of having her best throw of the year, though. It was 1943 going into this, and that is one centimeter off. 1944. Van de Goer France in fourth. Lifetime best of 2093. And that's wide. So she will finish in fourth. So Van der Goe's lifetime best. Can't ask more than that, frankly. Has her in fourth spot. Categories will be broken up again for the Paralympic Games in Tokyo. Laura Barr is wrapping up. Some solid throwing today. 24-19 her best. It'll be a bronze for her. Having won bronze in this discus in Berlin at the Berliner Dynamo Stadium. Almost the best throw of the day. That was 24-11. She wraps up with 24-19. She has a bronze. She was close to the silver, but Swavinska has that tonight with that world record in her division of 24.77, and that's out.
So Neve McCarthy of Ireland has the gold. She successfully defends her title. That was won three years ago. And Stravinska, who won gold in the shots in Berlin and silver in the discus, repeats that here. The satisfaction of a new world record, too. Couldn't keep it straight, doesn't matter. She is the silver medalist for Poland. Neve McCarthy defends her title. She's the gold medalist for Ireland. Ireland's second gold of the week and a fourth medal. It's the first time she's had to defend a major championship title, and she's done that. And frankly, she didn't care where that went. She stepped out, it was being measured. It's a no throw. And that's her second European gold. Previously, uh, silver in 2016. Well, Ireland have had three champions in recent years. Noel Lenehan and uh, Orla Barry. The other two, Orla Barry, having retired now uh, in the run-up to the original Tokyo 2020. And they've got a flag as well, with which she can celebrate. Later, maybe. Well, we're back to the track for the men's 100 metres T11 final. Complete visual impairment of the man who has that European and championship record. Anastasios Gavalas said that earlier today. A high class field again in this one. But the youngster is making a name for himself in lane one. Justin Novas is first major championship for the 20 year old. Made it through to the final of the 400 metres. Man is taking gold in that 400 metres. Timothy Adol, 2016 and 2018 European champion. And Gavilas, who has that European and championship record set in his heat. Oh semi-finalist or silver I should say back in 2018 just Greg and Pustabel disqualified back in 2018 so he'll be looking to make events the Paralympic Games 400 metre champion he's already lost his long jump title here so Adolf is going for three in a row in lane three to add to the 400 metres gold he's already taken at these championships Two more races on the track to come after this one this evening. And this one needs complete silence. Compulsory to have a guide in the T11. Please stand up. So hands got up from Gavilas, it looks like. Green card. Just needs to reset himself. Now you see, if you are new to para-athletics in the T11 category, they have to have a tether with the guide. Oh, no marks. And that has to be set. And it takes a little bit of time for them to, first of all, get them into the blocks. Then to make sure that both the guide and the athlete are happy with how that tether has been set amongst them. And you do see a lot of disqualifications, especially in the 100 metres events, where the guide doesn't let the athlete go across the line at the end to finish first. That is 
necessary for the athlete to cross the line ahead of the guide. So you'll see they've released them across the line at the end of the race. So we're set to go this time. The Sid Novas in one, the Dolphins three, Gavilas in five, and Descarrega Pujdeval in lane seven. And they get away with no issues, and it is Adol who's the quickest out of the blocks. He's looking good as Gavilas is as well, and Gavilas is going to get there, is he? It's going to be very tight in the end. Gavilas, I think, has just got it from Adol. 10.99 is the time, just outside that record set earlier today. And it is Gavilas has been crowded down. He's equaled the European record, the championship record he set earlier. He's won by one one hundredth of a second over Timothy Adol who set a new lifetime best with his silver medal. Well, Gavilas, what would be the odds on equaling the mark that he set earlier in the heat? He put his hand up to start when he wasn't happy to go. He reset and he blasted out of the blocks. It was a Dolph who got away very quick as well. But that man, Gavilas, has picked up the gold medal he so richly deserves. The Dolph was going for the double. He was going for the 400 and 100 win. He won the last two European championships. But it was that man there taking the plaudits. Anastasios Gavilas. Well, they got away. It was Adolf who got away quickest, but Gavilas drew him in. And it was always going to be tight at the end. He only managed to make the final Gavilas back in 2018. He came second in the 200 metres back then. Don't worry about silvers. This time he'll take a gold in the 100. Well, there's a prospect looking ahead to the Paralympic Games. David Brown, the American, holds that world record of 10.92. The six 100s of a second more to make up to get to that. And who's to say that he won't? The man known to his friends as Nassos. Has gone blast off. There's no problem at all. There's just a goal to look forward to. Tears of joy. As Greece reigns supreme in the men's 100 meters, T11. Congrats. Well, you heard congrats to that. Congrats indeed. He equals his own European and Championship record of 10.98. Timothy Adol, he's been dethroned. Takes silver with a lifetime best. And Descarrega Puzdevol, the Paralympic 400 meter champion, takes the bronze. Well, this has been well, a great to yourselves. taster ahead of the Paralympic Games. And certainly for Bogacheva as well. New record set in this F-54 Javelin. Maria Bogacheva with the gold for Russia. Championship record, 1486. Yulia Nazura, the silver for Belarus. And Maya Rykovic, the bronze for Montenegro. European record in her own category for Yana Lebedieva. Which was F53.
A lot for Poland to celebrate as well. They've been one of the most successful nations here. They usually are in every form of athletics. And there have been four major athletics championships, global events held this year in athletics and para athletics, and Poland have hosted every single one. 24 77, that putting Swavinska into the simple medal position and a world record in the F40. Neve McCarthy with the gold for Ireland, going out to 30 meters 03. It was silver in the discus for her in Rio. Bronze in Dubai, the last World Championships, having had silver in London. And she got that great prize of a silver medal. Neve McCarthy gets the European gold for Ireland. Ireland's second gold of the week. Renata Swavinska, the silver for Poland. And Laura Paz, the bronze for the Netherlands. And of course, Neve McCarthy had the even greater prize then of sharing a commentary box with us two later in the week. Joy's for her. Joy's back on the track. The medium visual impairment this time. Men's 100 metres T12. And the man who holds the world, European and championship records. And he's the world champion. There he is. Watch From Norway. Salam Kasafali. Great story indeed. Okay, the championship you. record he set earlier today at 10.75. <gasps> and he sounds pumped, doesn't he? Four to go in this. The option of running with a guide, being the medium visual impairment, and Marcel Puttinger of Germany will do just that. Alexander Kozenkov, his guide, will go with him. As Roman Tarasov in a first European Championship will go from the outside. There are the records held by Salam Kashifali of Norway. He'll start from lane three. So don't be fooled by the guide. There are four who are going in this. Zach Shaw of Great Britain, the 25 year old from Grimsby. He's an athlete, a model, and a personal trainer. And he took gold in the Universal Relay back in 2018. This man took up athletics when he was 17, made his senior debut in 2019. He won the World Championship that year at his senior major championship debut. Marcel Verdiga, personal best in the heat, 28-year-old physiotherapist from Germany. And the man who was sixth in 2019 at the Worlds. He's in higher education, sports management. On your marks. Roman Tarasov in lane seven. So we had a championship record this morning. Will there be a new European or even world record set by that man? Shaw in one, Kashafali in three, Bertiga in five, and Tarasov in seven. seven. They jump very quickly indeed, as does Kashafali, and also well on the outside is Tarasov, and it's Kashafali who's got Zach Shaw driving up on the inside, but Kashafali is going to get there. What's the time going to be? 10.71, a new championship record for Salem Kashafali. Well, he broke his mark that he set earlier this morning by four one hundredths of a second. Round that down and make that five one hundredths of a second. 10.70. Tarasov takes the silver in 10.99. And Zach Shaw with a lifetime best comes home in third position. But that man there, what a runner he is. What an athlete. 
and he's a showman as well. It's great to see. Well, I said it's a wonderful story. He was born in Congo. His family moved to Norway when he was 11 years of age. This is second major championship. He's won a world championship gold and he's won a European championship gold. So at both events, he's claimed the major prize as the man who's a math teacher. The numbers, they do add up for him on this occasion. Blistering start. And a decent finish as well. A Norwegian superstar. And when he comes up against further opposition at the Paralympic Games, it should prove some championships indeed. Fitting that he made his debut at Notville back in 2019, where Paris board is king and queen. He's also competed in able-bodied athletics and he's won gold medals at the national championships in Norway in the 60 metres in 2015. Such is his athleticism. Well, I suggest when he gets back there after the Paralympic Games, back to his school, they'll be keen to learn more about maths and athletics. Championship record for Kasia Philly taking the gold, Tarasov with the silver, and Zach Shaw with a lifetime best in the bronze medal position of 11.06. Well, he is quite a champion, isn't he? And it was interesting to see in that photo finish shot, Tarasov looking across, seeing how good this guy actually is. Tarasov, the old world record holder, whose mark was broken by Kashifali. He sets the championship record anyway in the semi-final this morning. We've got one race left of the week, one event left. One more goal to be decided. And then we can fully focus on the Paralympic Games. What a fun week it has been. It's been a different week. Bubbles and all of that. No fans. And it's a shame because I'm pretty sure this would have been one of the best attended, possibly the best attended European Championship we've ever had. Grisetto had uh, quite a full main stand uh, Sort of a Serie C, Serie D football stadium. But the main stand was full a lot of the time. It's meant that uh, no overseas commentators have been able to work in Poland this week. Limited uh, photographers, no journalists, there was uh, no media accreditation open for this. So everybody's had to watch from abroad. But the uh, amount of live coverage Polish TV have given this on TVP, they've been uh, cutting up the pictures, they're used to it. They uh, have generated good audiences this week. Anyway. We've got three athletes left vying for this final gold medal of the week. Cecile, uh, Cecile Gons finished fourth in the 100 metres here, her first major championship. She's been a wheelchair basketballer as well with uh, KAA Ghent. 
the same sports club as the football team, as the Belgian League champions in football in 2015, will be in the new European Conference League next season. The women's 800 metres, T34. It's coordination impairment. It is the strongest wheelchair athletes in the 30s. So in lane five for Russia, the 100 and 400 champion in Grisetto in 2016, the 100 meter silver medalist at these Europeans, Veronica Doranina. In lane four for Belgium, fourth in the 100 meters here in her first major championships, Cecile Goetz. And in lane three for Great Britain, the new European 100 meters champion, Fabian Andre. It's the final of the women's 800 meters T34. And we're underway. No Cockcroft, no Adenigan, but there was British success in the 100 meters. What about the eight? Doranina's got off really well. Fabian Andre with her. And Goins trailing right at the start. This is the contest then between these two. Andre going in on the inside of the Weir Archer Academy, David Weir, Jenny Archer, the latter being a coach. She's been a hospital physiotherapist assistant in Britain's NHS, the, the National Health Service. Very successful at the uh, CPISRA for cerebral palsy athletes, their World Games in 2018, uh, different organization. And she was a swimmer at that, had a look around and said, well, maybe athletics, I might be good at that. So far she is. The bell is coming, Andre in the lead, Doranina in second place. The three time medalist in Grisetta. Guns behind in third for now, in the closing straight. So it's Andre, the 100 meters champion, head of Doranina, the 100 meters silver medalist. It's been a very successful championships for both their nations. Doranina based in Moscow. Andre based at the front of this. Well, her performances this week might just have opened another seat in the plane for her for Tokyo. That's something to be decided in due course. It's Fabian Andre heading in towards the closing straight and now well in control. Doranina slowing down suddenly with half a lap to go in this 800 meters. Fabian Andre making a big name for herself this week. She will be a double European champion in Bidgosh in Paralympics year. 2.15.18 the winning time, she's been fab again, Doranina with the silver, and Cecilia Gunz will be third. It's a lifetime best for Andre as well, she's taken a whopping five seconds off it. She was a 2.20 athlete, now she's a 2.15. Doranina in second in 2.22, and Gunz is going to be third. from the Ghent area, from Linden, and it will be third spot for her in her first major championship, and lots of experience. It will be a big help for her career. So she's had a fourth place and a third place, and for Andre, numero uno, twice for Great Britain. What a find. Lifetime best, two gold medals, it's been a different kind of championships and it's been a championship where it being Paralympic year, some of the biggest names now want to dedicate themselves to training. I mean, Hannah Cockroft's set four new world records, or world records of four events in the past couple of weeks in Arbonne and in Notville. So she's been taking a well-earned rest this week. Fabian Andre has been putting all the effort in and how.
That's only a second away, you know, from Hannah Cockroft's championship record set in Berlin three years ago. And that when she was battling heavily against uh, Carrier Denigan. They found another brilliant athlete. And uh, Doranina coming in for the silver medal. And as is always the story, it's somebody who was doing a different sport, was very good at it, and just took a shine to athletics. Thought, well, why, why don't I try this? And she was spotted. She moved across to athletics. And that's two European titles for her. She's not going to forget this in a hurry. Fabian Andre, gold medal for Great Britain, second of the week in the women's 800. Doranina, the silver for Russia, and Cecile Goins, third for Belgium. And I don't want to go old Jeremy Beadle, but if you're watching at home, the next time the star of the show could be you. Plenty of athletes have been fans of para athletics and then said, I want to try it. 31 golds for the Russian Federation, 74 medals, Ukraine with 17 titles, Poland with 15, but the second highest number of medals, 49. Great Britain with 14 gold, 14 titles this week, 37 medals. France, the Netherlands, Switzerland with eight titles each. Germany and Finland with five. Always really good in the wheelchair events. Leo Pekatati, successful as always. They have 11 medals and Greece have 11, Croatia 10. Ireland with four medals, two of them. One today through Michael McKillop and Neve McCarthy. Greta Stray-Makita with the uh, other gold. Mary Fitzgerald with their bronze. Iceland. Two medals in the same event for the first time. 33 nations have won medals this week, including Luxembourg, with Tom Habscheid. Clear the calendar. The Paralympic Games are on the way. We've had a brilliant week. It's been an absolute cracker. A shame to see it all end. But we'll be back. The Paralympic Games coming up. Kobe next year in the World Championships. It's all to look forward to. So, all that to be said from myself, Tolson Tollett, Will Downing, and the rest of the team, will bid you goodbye for now. Double knock. Now a short speech to the President of the Polish Sport Association for the same. I na zakończenie mistrzostw przemówi prezes Polskiego Związku Niepełnosprawnych Stad